When you picture a ghost, the image that likely comes to mind first isn't someone who's wearing sunglasses and is giving you a big thumbs up. It's probably instead a ghoulish figure in a Victorian dress or tailcoat, their face shrouded in mist, moving slowly through an abandoned mansion. But why then is it that we almost expect ghosts to be Victorian? And what happened to all of the cavemen ghosts, the medieval spirits, or even, dare we say, the dinosaur phantoms? Are they out there? Or is our collective idea of the afterlife just influenced by cultural storytelling? Hopefully this video will provide you with a new understanding of the spirit world that may even make you feel less scared about the things that go bump in the night. The image of Victorian ghosts in popular media was born with the 19th century explosion of gothic literature and horror fiction. Genres that gifted us with haunting figures draped in somber, flowing Victorian attire that became synonymous with eerie apparitions. Authors like Charles Dickens, Edgar Allan Poe, and Henry James crafted ghostly characters whose clothing and presence evoked eerie dread, tragedy, and melancholy. But these stories weren't merely chilling, though. They spoke directly to a Victorian society intimately familiar with death and the afterlife. With high mortality rates, rampant diseases, and few scientific understandings of illness, the Victorians lived close to death and were surrounded by reminders of it. Whether that was through morning rituals, memorial photographs, or spiritual seances, this fascination with death grew into the popular practice of spiritualism, where it arose from human curiosity as well as being heavily driven by the money that could be made from those in need of answers or comfort, instilling a belief within Victorian society that the living could communicate with the dead. Spiritualist practices, including seances, medium readings, and ghost photography, grew immensely popular and created an aura of mystery around the era. People would gather in dimly lit rooms around Ouija boards, hoping for a glimpse of their lost loved ones. By the late 1800s, mediums like the Fox Sisters gained fame for their alleged ability to contact the dead, further solidifying the association between the Victorian period and ghostly imagery. This surge in spiritualism wasn't just a Victorian fad. It deeply influenced later portrayals of ghosts. Even today, the eerie ambience of seances and medians, often set in dimly lit Victorian parlors, remains a cornerstone of ghostly aesthetics in movies, TV shows, and literature. The image of Victorian ghosts endures not because ghosts from other times wouldn't exist, but because Victorian culture was already so steeped in practices meant to communicate with the beyond that they left a cultural blueprint for how we envision spirits. Victorian clothing itself, layered, formal, and often dark, has an inherently somber yet ghostly quality when imagined in spectral form. The long skirts, high collars, and lace details lend themselves perfectly to an almost theatrical, haunting silhouette. Victorian homes, with their heavy drapes, ornate furniture, and dark wood interiors, also enhance the idea of a haunted house. In media, these spaces are dimly lit, filled with shadows, and often echo the loneliness and isolation that we associate with ghostly presences, as well as a time long gone. The eerie silence of an abandoned Victorian house, with its flickering candles and creaky floors, becomes a perfect setting for hauntings. As a result, Victorian ghosts became not just spirits, but a visual and atmospheric shorthand for fear and mystery. Horror fiction and cinema have certainly played a pivotal role in defining our perception of ghosts as being Victorian. Films and shows like The Others, The Woman in Black, or The Haunting of Bly Manor feature ghosts who seem permanently attached to the Victorian period. Even when horror stories involve modern characters, the ghosts that they encounter are often from a bygone Victorian past. But why this persistence? Well. The Victorian image of ghosts is recognizable and evokes an immediate sense of the past, tapping into our fear of things that feel both familiar and distant. By using Victorian ghosts, horror fiction taps into a powerful image that allows the audience to sense history and loss. This makes them ideal carriers of emotional weight in ghost stories, 
as they aren't just scary, they're tragic. By contrast, a caveman or a medieval knight lacked that inherent pathos, making Victorian ghosts feel more relatable and emotionally impactful. So now that we've mentioned it, what about all the other eras of history? Why don't we hear about ghost cavemen or spectral dinosaurs? Well, the answer may actually lie in how ghosts function within cultural narratives. Ghosts are often viewed as echoes of the unresolved, a lingering presence bound to specific places, objects, or emotions. This type of haunting requires a more developed self-awareness, or unfinished business, that in storytelling we associate with more recent historical periods. Cavemen, for example, might not fit neatly into the same ghostly template because the cultural beliefs around death and the afterlife were likely vastly different. Then there's the practical aspect. Costumes and sets for cavemen or medieval ghosts might seem too novel or even humorous for an audience conditioned to find ghosts in the Victorian setting. A ghostly figure in a loincloth might break the illusion of horror, appearing more prehistoric than eerie. Just look at Robin from the TV series Ghosts as an example. Although none of the ghosts in that show are especially scary, he is particularly hard to envision as something you would fear. As a result, Victorian ghosts remain popular because they straddle a line between familiarity and the uncanny that other historical depictions might disrupt. But would ghosts be as scary in modern clothes? A ghost in a hoodie and cargo trousers just doesn't strike the same eerie chords as one in Victorian lace or formal attire. Today's everyday clothes are too familiar, blending easily into our world rather than hinting at a strange presence from the past. Victorian attire instantly signals something doesn't belong here. But in horror movies and shows, when ghosts do wear modern clothes, they often rely on other methods to unsettle the viewer. The horror here shifts from their attire to the depiction of death itself, like showing a ghost with visible injuries or distortions. In The Haunting of Hill House, for instance, the bent neck lady isn't terrifying because of her clothes. It's the unnatural way her neck is bent, revealing her cause of death that evokes fear. Similarly, ghosts dressed in typical, unremarkable clothing might be depicted as burned, decayed, or disfigured such as in the sixth sense, making their injuries a reminder of their tragic end and a signal of the supernatural. This approach changes the focus from the unfamiliarity of the past to the physical horrors of death, showing that when ghosts appear in modern clothing, filmmakers must emphasize their disturbing circumstances or appearance to maintain the same chilling effect. So in conclusion, Victorian ghosts have cemented themselves as the quintessential spectres, not because they represent all hauntings, but because they bring together the ideal mix of cultural intrigue, aesthetic depth, and haunting atmosphere. From Gothic literature and spiritual seances to the spectral silhouette of Victorian clothing, these ghosts tap into our fascination with the mysteries of the past and the eerie beauty of the unknown. They evoke a time filled with melancholy, and unspoken secrets that continue to resonate in every good ghost story. Whether or not ghosts truly exist, they exist powerfully in our cultural imagination, bringing chills down our spines each time we find ourselves in an old, shadowy room. But perhaps understanding why these ghosts appear as they do, formed by layers of history, artistry, and human curiosity, has offered you with a new perspective on what we fear. Instead of simply haunting us, making those things that go bump in the night a little less frightening and a little more fascinating.